Ladies and gentlemen, what's up? This is BC. Welcome back to another video. I wanted to do a video today on lessons I've learned from knocking on, I don't know how many thousands of doors. I would say it's upwards of probably 75,000 to 100,000 uh, doors uh, for real estate and sales. And I wanted to give you guys a different perspective because, you know, throughout the years and, and now new people come into my channel or maybe people who have been around for a long time. When I give advice on a particular subject like this or communication, I think a lot of people fail to realize how much direct experience I have with it, right? And, and that's extremely important because my perspective is going to be unique, seeing that I've concentrated on this, you know, activity and around these subjects for so long with hands-on action that I can bring to the table something that very few people on this planet can because very few people have amassed that type of experience and have been that consistent over the years, okay? So I wanted to give you um, a few things, right, from what I've learned over, you know, knocking these 7,500,000 doors or whatever it's been. This is this is really what it boils down to. A few key points may turn this into a series. We'll see. First is this, is human beings are patterned individuals. And a lot of the, the responses you're going to get at the door, right, you'll start to learn very quickly that they fall into basic groups, right? When somebody's upset, they're going to exhibit a particular pattern of actions and qualities. When somebody's happy or in a good mood, they're going to give you certain indicators and fall into particular patterns, right? You're going to have a certain type of patterning in regards to objections, right? Other things that are unconscious responses at the beginning, like I'm not interested or I don't have time and this and that, right? Which people don't even think about before they say it just comes out, right? So you're going to see that these patterns are going to continue to, to happen over and over. And what's going to happen over time is your ability to recognize it and respond accordingly will get better and sharper and sharper and sharper. And that's what you want to focus on. Okay. Now, again, the, the, the all encompassing thing is these are factors like this and many others that you have zero control over. When you knock on that door, you have no control over how that particular person is going to respond. I can do certain things to potentially give myself a better chance of getting a positive result, getting the door to open, opening a conversation. However, I do not have control over the other person, okay? That's the first one. The second one is this, is again, you're entering somebody else's reality. So instead of a lot of times already making assumptions about what somebody's gonna say or coming in 100% with, I'm gonna say this, before that step, you have to be able to assess your situation and this individual and their current state, state of mind, emotional state. You have to make that quick assessment first, which is challenging in the beginning, then move forward, okay? I'm all about people being enthusiastic and we know that sells. However, if I knock on a door, right, and somebody opens and it looks like on their face, they just heard bad news or they don't seem in a very good mood, right? I'm gonna assess that first and check it out and see how they respond before I just come in how I'm going to come in. Okay. That is a millisecond, a microsecond quick assessment, right? We all know mirroring and matching, right? Cool. But we have to be particular with these, with these specifics because you never know. And if somebody tells you now's not a good time, you know, my mother just passed away or my friend passed away, overwhelming them with that just strict enthusiasm, is not going to work then? So we have to be able to make that quick assessment, then come in with that slight adjustment with what we do. Okay, there's underlying principles that we're always gonna continue to, to use, which I've given on the videos. However, this, as you develop this, you'll be able to read people quicker and your responses will be faster. Okay, because although we are gonna use the same set of techniques, each interaction has slight little variations that eventually for you will become natural. But in the beginning, it's gonna take time and a lot of effort for you to refine these things and get better on the spot and making the adjustments, okay? The next one is this, is the average person is a lot more receptive than you think. I started realizing after knocking on about a thousand to 5,000 doors, somewhere in that range, that a lot of the things that I was getting that I perceived as negative were a result of my errors, whether that be my body language, me being too loud, right? Me not delivering uh, my scripts and my questions correctly. I was a contributor and a cause of a lot of these things versus just me pointing the finger and saying, oh, people are crazy. The overwhelming majority of people were positive and receptive, right? Now, 
when I say positive, I don't mean they came out super happy to see me, but they would at least entertain, you know, my conversation slightly, right? Some people closed the door. Some people said not interested and closed the door, but I don't consider that negative. That just means they weren't interested. Very rarely did I have an over the top negative response where somebody pulled a weapon on me, threatened me or something like that. Did it happen? Of course, but you have to take a look and take stock of the reality. And for me, that was far and few in between. For every 100 interactions, I maybe had one, two or three negative ones where they did something above and beyond that was negative. Now you may say, well, that's quite a bit. Well, it's not, it's 3%. It's one to 3% of my interactions. So for if out of every hundred people I talk to, only one to three go out of the way to be an asshole or negative, that's pretty good in my eyes, especially when you're doing something like knocking on a stranger's door. You're already fighting an uphill battle. You're already fighting an uphill battle. Okay. The next point is this, is I learned to embrace those basic fundamental tools because in the end, that along with consistency was the most important thing. A lot of the, the leads that I got, a lot of the transactions that I got, a lot of the, the headway that I made and door knocking wasn't a, a, a matter of me being this magician at the door or being so special. It was literally putting myself in the right place at the right time putting myself in the right place at the right time. What that means is my consistency and being out there more than other people is what allowed me to open those doors. Now, is there quite a bit of transactions I got and things I was able to, to produce because I got better and I got more skilled? Of course, but that's secondary to what I just said. It's secondary. It's 100% secondary. Many of the opportunities were right place, right time. I knocked on the right door. I met the person at the right time, right? Even if they ended up transacting with me later, Right. There was a story of a, of a lady who I, I knocked on her door. She literally pokes her head out for like a second and says she's busy, but she kind of threw it off hand said, you know, but I may sell in the future. My mom is sick. I said, great. You know what? I don't want to interrupt. Let's do this. Let's exchange information. Right. And we'll keep in touch. So literally a 30 second interaction turns into me getting her number. They're in my database. Right. That individual is in my database. Now they're getting my emails, my all, all my follow up stuff, all my sequences. And, you know, two, two and a half years later, guess what? We list that house and we sell it. Done deal. Done deal. Now, why did that happen? Because in that moment, I got that person's phone number. But again, I didn't do anything special. It happened because I did what I was supposed to do. I got their number and I followed my process. Simple. There was no magic letter. There was no magic video. There was no magic phone call. There was no magic script to get their number. I just followed the sequence. And by being out there that day when I was supposed to, knocking on the doors on the street that I was supposed to, I got what I deserved. I got what I deserved in that instance. 1,000%. 1,000%. Okay. Next point is I learned that I have to put myself in the best position with strategy. This is a game of strategy. Case in point, you go door to door. Other people go door to door outside of your profession. Right, outside of your profession. What that means is people have already developed in their mind and put individuals, especially salespeople going door to door in particular boxes. And my thought was, how can I learn these boxes and make sure that I don't fall into them? Okay. If you go door to door or you think about people that go door to door right now, you may think off the top of your head, Mormons and Jehovah's Witnesses, right? Now, through my experience, I've always seen the Mormons always wear a white dress shirt, whether it's short or long sleeve, black pants and a tie. So immediately in my mind, I said, I'm never going to wear that outfit. I will never even wear a white dress shirt to door knock. Why? The assessment is that some people may not even open the door because let's say they have had negative interactions or they don't want to speak to the, the Mormon gentleman going door to door. I've already X myself out because I wasn't using proper strategy. I don't want them to think that. I want them to at least have the curiosity to open the door. That's when the game begins. Jehovah's Witnesses too. A lot of the men that I saw wore like gray suits, you know, those darker colored suits. So I said, okay, I'm never gonna wear a suit like that. I don't wanna follow their aesthetics because then I'm thrown into that box, okay? You have to start thinking strategy when it comes to this thing. The more you think like that, the easier it becomes. I noticed that those individuals too, when they would knock on the door, they would stand very close to the door. I was always at least from the very beginning, from 2013 on, I was always, you know, eight, 10, 12 feet back, especially because I'm a bigger guy. 
You have to think strategy. How can I come off as the least biggest threat to these people? How can I increase the chances of them opening the door? Stepping back, more of an open body language, relaxed, smiling, eye contact. Not your hands in your pockets, not turned away, not looking suspicious. Again, strategize in your mind. Okay. Additionally, when it comes to, to all this stuff with door knocking, <clears throat> the times that I didn't want to do it and the times that I gave a little bit extra effort is when I was rewarded the most handsomely. The days that I really didn't want to go, Thursday, Friday, right after a hard week of going door to door, it's hot because I started my journey in Southern California, right? In the summer, 105, 110, 120 degrees, you're in a suit with a tie, you're sweating, right? You, you want to hit 100 doors a day like I was, but you're at door number 90 and you're like, ah, eh, I've already done enough. It's in those days that you didn't want to do it or you have to give the extra effort or you decide, hey, I hit the 100, but I'm going to hit 10 or 15 more. It's in those moments that the biggest, juiciest rewards come every time, every time. I can think of so many examples. Why? Because I can think of the opposite, too. I can think of when I didn't do what I was supposed to by a very small margin or I didn't give the extra effort where I lost a potential opportunity. I remember like it was yesterday, there was one time that um, I knocked, right? And instead of finishing out the street, there was like eight or nine more homes. I said, hey, I already knocked on 100 doors. You know what? I don't have to finish it. I already did my job, right? Long story short, a week or two later, one of the homes and those five that I was supposed to finish, which it wouldn't have taken me long to finish, ends up putting the home for sale. And I'm sitting there like, Oh my God, all I had to do was knock on five more doors. Now I hit my hundred, sure. But what would it have taken to do the little bit extra to knock on those five that I had missing? It would have been a very small effort. And I would have potentially, now I may not have gotten that opportunity, but it's okay. I could have rest assured saying, I did knock on the door, I didn't catch them, oh well. Versus being on this side where it's like, dang, I missed out. I missed out. Okay, here's another one I can give you is... When you are, are doing this, you have to figure out a way because you're going to do this so consistently and it can seem very monotonous. You have to learn to make this fun, whether you challenge yourself, whether you bring people with you, right? Whatever it is, figure out a way to turn this into a game and make it fun. If you can learn to do that, your ability to remain disciplined, committed, and your sustainability of doing this over a long period of time will skyrocket. Why? You're putting your creativity and your energy into it. I would turn in like getting no's. I would turn that into a game. How many no's can I get? And then I would play with some of my peers because I knew I was going to get yeses somewhere in there. You inevitably do. You get phone numbers, you get leads. It's just a numbers game, right? And as your skill gets higher, your conversion rate improves. But in the meantime, it's like, you know what? I'm just going to out effort everybody. So I'm going to count the amount of no's that I get. And we would check at the end of the day. I got, you know, 46 no's today. Oh, I got 40. I got 55, right? Now, we still talked about how many appointments we set and leads we got, sure, but we turned that part of it into a game. Now, when I hear no, instead of taking it personally, like many of us do, now I'm getting excited. I'm like, oh, I'm going to beat Bob and, and Joe because I'm going to get more no's than them, right? Seems silly, but it's a way to trick yourself, in a sense, into making this thing fun. And if you don't have fun with what you do, good luck, especially going door to door. It will chew you up and spit you out. It will make a man or a boy out of you for sure. Why? Because after, again, knocking so many doors, I realized that this is one of the highest and best forms and difficult forms of self-improvement and self-help. Many of us, right, struggle with communication. Many of us struggle with social anxiety and all of those things and all of the above and everything in between. This forces you to confront that and think about it. You or people that you know who suffer tremendously because of this. This will force you to look at all of the skeletons in your closet, pull them out and look at them face to face to confront all of your inner demons and say, let's go, dude, let's go. Because you're either going to do it or you're going to shy away and run away and then they win and you get nowhere. You actually go backwards when you do that. So now you're, you're crossing into a new arena, uncharted territory. Now, looking back, I'm so grateful that I did all of this and dedicated myself to it. Why? It transformed me completely. It's amazing. I wouldn't be the person I'm at. I wouldn't be the person I am today or where I'm at today. Nowhere near it had I not done things like this. This is one of the many things that I did. 
Because, man, you have to put your ego to the side. You have to put your pride to the side. You have to do this consistently. You're literally going to embarrass yourself because you're not going to be good at first. You're going to be nervous, sweaty palms. You're going to stutter. You're not going to know what to say. It's okay. We all go through that. But this is one of the highest and best forms of self-help that you can do for sure. For sure. And I challenge you to do it because, man, the other side of it, through all the struggles and everything that you do, it's a beautiful position to be in. It's a beautiful position to be in that a very small fragment of the population is in. And it, it will give you the key to everything that you want and more if you commit to it. Okay. So I may do a part two. Comment below part two if you'd like to see a part two. Uh, I enjoy doing videos like this because they're a little bit different and I think they're cool. Leave a thumbs up if you haven't already subscribed to the channel. Also, I do offer a lot of things like Modern Success, my coaching program. You can find that in the description on my website. I'm also doing uh, an event at the end of uh, November in person and online, and I will be recording it and sending it to everybody. It's called Primal Code. I really recommend you get to this one. Uh, it's definitely going to be one for the books. I haven't done my own personal hosted event in a long time, but you can find that on my website as well. All right, that's it for this one, guys. Appreciate you tuning in. Uh, if you did enjoy this one, we'll, we'll see, and I'll give you a part two, all right?